Lou Fernandez for Dell Tips. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the brand new Dell Latitude E6420 from Dell Computers. It's a brand new spanking machine that we just got in here and I'm going to show you why it's so great. So the first thing you notice is we're going to compare it to these two, to this older Dell machine that we had before. Now this Dell, as you can see, is about three or four years old. When we compare it, the first thing you notice this is black and this is gray, but this is also metally, and this is real metally, not just metally feel and look, but actual metal. This is an anodized outside covering, which is really nice and resistant to wear, but the real thing about it is that if you love fingerprints, you will not be able to not show fingerprints on this. It is a fingerprint magnet. It's so, it, you know, so people will know that this guy uses his Dell all the time. It's covered in fingerprints. Now this one, it looks metally, but it's really plasticky, and that it was disappointing when we got them and has only proved more disappointing as time has gone on. Now, beyond that, inside in the guts, you're looking at it. Intel Sandy Bridge i7 processor for this. It's top of the line i7 Sandy Bridge, super clock cycles and processing speed. You're going to be able to do a lot of stuff with this chip. And this one has the Dell uh, Centrino Duo. Um, at the time when it came out, it was probably okay. Now it is a dog. I wouldn't even give this computer to someone from Africa. That's just how it is. Now let's talk about the keyboards. Now the keyboards you can see with the new uh, E6420, they have compacted the keyboard. They, they got rid of this upper bar up here. Uh, there's no more of this up here. They got just the power. All you need is the power. No more of these lights and blinky things over here. It's all about the latitude, slickness, and the sleekness. They still have the Windows logo button, but now this one has a circle on it. Uh, you'll also see that they have chosen, instead of blue, like on these numbers and on the function keys, now they have orange. And so orange all around, the orange is really eye-catching, it's nice, she's like, oh, I'm looking at the keyboard, it's right in the middle, you're never confused about am I typing on other parts of the computer and not making words because I'm not typing on keys. Now this is a well-defined area. You'll also notice that instead of up here on top, you'll notice that there's down here on the side, the sound, volume up, volume down and a mute button. So those are three buttons that come in handy if you're trying to control the sound of your computer. Now, up here on the top, there's a bunch of choices you can make, all with the function keys. There's no number pad because the numbers are all in the function keys. And it still has a touch pad. You'll notice it has two click buttons. And on the old one, there are two more click buttons above the touch pad. But on this new Dell E6420, there are three. I don't know what they do, but I bet that is important for people who want to use those buttons. So, and last but not least, we'll add that there is still this little click mouse button nipple in the middle of the keyboard. Now, for me, that little nib is like a vestigial organ. I don't understand what it's for. I don't know why you'd use it. I get that you move the mouse around with it, but it makes no sense to me. If you like to use it, more power to you. I will say that it has less little nibbles uh, bumpy parts inside than the old one, but I doubt you'll notice the difference. So, let's close this one because I never want to look at it again, and we'll talk about this stuff on the side. Now, the first thing you'll see over here on the right-hand side of the Dell E6420 computer is that there's this kind of uh, slot that I'm assuming something else goes in. It says EC, so that's some sort of shorthand for something else. I don't know what it could be for. There's also this which is your DVD drive for watching your DVDs, DVD, I said also an RW for CDs and DVDs and DVD R's and RW's and R minus R's and plus R's and, and RW's and maybe dual air, but I'm not sure, so don't, don't you go quote me that I said that. Now again, if you look over here, there's also a switch. Now you're saying, why would you need a switch? There's already a power button on here. Well, you use the switch to turn your internet on and off. And that is so much more important than having some sort of software toggle or keyboard shortcut for turning your power up, uh, to your wireless card on and off. You're going to save so much power when you're not using your internet with a laptop, which I'm sure is going to be most of the time. Um, now, you'll see that there's also uh, one USB which is not a lot of USBs, but there are ports. You just plug another port here, and all of a sudden you have seven USBs. And, you know, the, you know, sometimes they're powered, so you need to have another power cord going somewhere else, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. You are using the USB to its maximum ability. There's also an USETA, which is uh, a different kind of hard drive, which I don't own one, but, uh, you know, a lot of people apparently do. I see them, that you can get them for, you know, the Xbox and uh, other network-attached storage drives. Um, 
and stands for external SETA. Uh, and so on this side, you'll notice that there's um, a VGA connector, so you can still connect this uh, laptop to any kind of old school monitor, uh, projector, you know, if you're like a, you know, a teacher who wants to give a presentation, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, do, is, there a D, is there a DVI here? Because, you know, you know, see some people use that, but now there's all kinds of new stuff. And there's also a headphone jack. So um, when you're doing your work, if you don't want to mess around with the volume, like muting, you can just put your headphones on and then no one can hear it unless you're listening to your music too loud. But, uh, you know, if you do that, you probably want to cut that out because it's bad for you. Um, and on the back, this is a, the battery. It's like extra battery. It kind of comes off. Um, you shouldn't hold it by this. It's not a handle. This is just extra battery for um, walking around if you, if you want to, you know, not be plugged into the wall for a while. And there's also a place for your ether wire and an HDMI in case you want to hook this up to a different kind of monitor or a little projector that has HDMI or a TV or anything like that that has HDMI. So you can use this to watch your movies or whatever. It's really an all around powerhouse machine. And uh, I have no idea how much it costs. Uh, it was just given to me. So that's how, that's how I roll. That, I got it like that just so you know. Um, and, you know. And besides that, it comes with, this old machine came with Windows XP, this one comes with Windows 7. Uh, so now you've got all the extra eye candy of Windows 7 going on. you got the little blue donut that circles around when it's trying to do stuff. It asks you all kinds of questions still about installing stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of pop-ups that happen that I don't know what they're for. Um, you know, typical Windows stuff. You also still have um, your, your uh, X and your two squares and your minus, uh, except now that the X is red, but still when you close one, you close the last window, you have to quit the program still. So that's still a uh, thing about Windows that's not so great. Hmm. Anyway, so now it comes down to should you buy this Dell E6420 computer from Dell Computers? And the answer to that is maybe. If you look at the specs and you decide it's what you want and you can afford. Well, that's going to do it for this review of the Dell E6420 from Dell Computers. My name's Lou. This has been Dell Tips. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.